r slash parents, episode 25. School days versus the disabled. So, my parents are absolute saints. They purchased a four bedroom colonial in the early 1980s with property that borders an elementary school. In the 1980s, while they were planning on starting a family, this was a brilliant move. Both school and a playground basically in the backyard. It's a lovely sleepy neighborhood in a great district. Fast forward to the early 2000s. My brother and I were already in high school. This school was absolutely overcrowded, and the district decides to save funds by slashing busing. If you do not live more than 5 miles from school, you don't get a bus ride. Busing goes from 10 buses to 2. Thus, the stage is set for over 200 cars filled with the worst entitled parents descending on our sleepy neighborhood every day, twice a day, parking all over the place, in oversized subs on narrow streets, that can barely handle two sedans passing each other. Tensions between the neighborhood and the school, well, the school parents, escalated steadily until the next road over banded together, to get one side parking during school drop off, and pick up hours. Why did it reach a peak enough to seek legal action? Because an ambulance couldn't get down the road to respond to an elderly neighbor's fall due to all these shit eps basically blocking the road. This shuffled half of those cars onto my parents' street. Tensions between the neighbors and the school parents were at a boiling point. I tried to convince my parents to just move, but the housing bubble had just burst. Now, at some point, someone discovered a back exit to the school building near the other end of our road off a small dead end. I'm not talking a cul de secretary, but an honest dead end with just four houses, two on each side. Cue the swarm of cars to that side of the road, so, basically, our neighborhood is an impassable parking lot for an hour around dismissal. One of our neighbors on that street is a disabled woman. Lovely, sweet, older woman. But, she has problems getting around, and numerous medical appointments. But, no problem, she had a slightly over width driveway, to make it easier for her to get in, and out of her car. She came out of her house one afternoon on her way to an appointment, only to find someone had blocked her entire driveway. Fortunately, the driver, our entitled mom, was still in the vehicle, my neighbor approached, gently knocked on the window, and asked the woman to kindly move her vehicle to unblock the driveway. Our rep decided the appropriate response was no. My neighbor tried to explain that she needed to get to a medical appointment. Our rep responded with, and I need to pick up my kid. My neighbor gently reminded her that she was blocking a driveway illegally. Our rep asked, well, where else am I supposed to park? My neighbor suggested another street a little further away that had ample parking, that time of day and walk. Ep was having none of that. This mother decided to play the, but I'm disabled card, arguing that she couldn't possibly walk that far. To which, my neighbor kindly pointed out that the school had plenty of handicapped parking right by the main entrance. And that's when our rep started cussing out my neighbor. In the end, my neighbor had to call the cops. This did not improve relations between the residents and the school. M calls me a racist and causes my 3 year relationship to end. I'm not sure that this even matters, but I'm a white 24F and my ex-boyfriend and his family are all black. Before I was even born I was put up for adoption and my parents who ended up adopting me are a black family. The whole incident starts about a week ago at my now ex-boyfriend's mother's house. It was her birthday celebration, and was a pretty large scale event with lots of their friends and family attending. His mother and I had never had a great relationship even before all of this happened. She made it very clear to me in no uncertain terms on several occasions that she didn't approve of me being with her son, accusing me from everything to being a gold digger to having jungle fever. Despite all that I'm given an invitation, out of obligation if nothing else, and I decide that I'm gonna go all in and put my best foot forward. I put on my best outfit, get my macute done, and have my mom who's a hairstylist do my hair. I have her braiding about a quarter of my hair into cornrows, and with the rest of it being my normal short hair being spruced up and covering one of my eyes, because I'm bad at describing it think like spider Gwen only imagine that the shaved part of her head is cornrows. 
I was running late from having to work that day and having to get myself ready, so when I show up to the house the party is already in full swing. I notice that I'm getting a few looks from his family members and at first I think it's just my mom's hard work paying off, especially when one of his little cousins comes up and tells me how pretty I look. Finally managed to find my boyfriend in the backyard hanging out with his mom. I come up to say hi and to give hugs, but when she looks at me, she gives me this death glare like I just spit in her face. She starts off on this rant that starts off with look at this little white girl, and I bulges into a full blown tirade with her screaming at me. I'm going to be paraphrasing a bit, since I don't remember verbatim what exactly was said, but the core I did was her calling me a racist piece of shit for having the nerve to show up with my hair braided, how I was using black culture to look pretty without having to experience the hardships that community goes through, and to top it off calling me mega bitch several times. I'm straight up sobbing as I try to defend myself, and she's mocking me for crying, and the entire time her family members including my boyfriend are straight up indifferent or encouraging her, my boyfriend falling into the indifferent category. She finishes by throwing her glass of wine on my blouse before finally getting pulled back by her husband, who tells me I need to leave. My boyfriend walked me to the door, with his mom continuing to mock the fact that I'm crying. He tells me he'll see me back at my place later, and goes back to the party. I was pretty hurt by that, and I spend a good chunk of time in my car trying to collect myself, before I manage to calm down enough to drive home. I had thought that my boyfriend was there sticking up for me, or at least telling her she overreacted, but as I found out later that wasn't the case, when he showed up to my place. He said that he didn't approve of how his mom handled the situation, but told me what he did understand, why she did what she did, and that what I did was wrong and racist. He then told me that I needed to apologize to his mom right away and to his family in a few months at the family reunion, and if I couldn't do that he couldn't see the relationship working out. Needless to say I'm pretty hurt and I ended up telling him all of the frustration I'd been keeping and about how he never goes to bat for me whenever his mother is disrespecting me, how he always finds a way to take her side or spin it like I'm overreacting. Long story short, we end up breaking up after I made it clear that I'm not going to apologize. With him saying that, if I don't get it, he can't explain it to me. Part of me is happy that I don't have to deal with this anymore, but I think I'm more angry and sad that his mom has him so thoroughly wrapped around her finger and I had to give up on a guy I thought was the one. School dazed versus the poison ivy wall. Now, if you read my other post, my parents basically lived in a powder keg behind a school. After busing was cut, swarms of eps came to my neighborhood every four pick up and drop off. It was a nightmare. Back in 2006, I moved home with my parents, so I could go back to school. My parents were saints, and refused to accept rent or any kind of financial contributions from me. Being a stubborn person, I refused to not do something to earn my keep, if they wouldn't shut up, and take my money. I started doing odd jobs around the house. My parents had reached an age, where there was plenty they shouldn't have been doing, but were too proud to admit it yet. So, I did a ton of yard work. I was very proud of the work I did, but I was no professional. This never became more evident than the poison ivy battle. I kept finding poison ivy in one corner of the yard. No amount of treatment or work could get rid of it. It always came back. One day after maybe two years of fighting the poison ivy, on a whim, I went to the other side of our fence, onto my neighbor's property. There was some ivy there, but not a ton. I brought up to their attention, got permission, and treated the area. Then, I went onto the school side of our fence. I found a wall of poison ivy on the other side. I'm stupefied it took me that luck to freaking investigate. Boy, was I dumb. It's lucky I was wearing gloves when I opened the gate that day, because even the gate was covered. So, thus began the great poison ivy war. Now, because my parents' property borders a school, we had become very accustomed to kids trespassing in our yard after school let out we had locked our gate, reinforced the stockage fence at weak spots, and cut all the tree branches to prevent sneaking over, but they'd still get in. 
it was an ongoing struggle to keep kids out of my mother's garden. We had no pool or anything that could be an attractive nuisance, but they just wanted to be in our yard. Maybe the flowers? In the midst of the poison ivy war, I was working in the backyard when a group of kids kept trying to get in. I warned them off a couple of times, but this group was very persistent and really snotty about it. I even told them about the poison ivy repeatedly. I'd had pie as a kid and didn't want them to feel the same misery. Instead of risking being seen as a threat and to give myself a few minutes to get composed, I walked around the long way to the school. Once there, I went to the group of vehicles still in the parking lot to see if they knew who the kids belonged to. As soon as I got close to the impromptu PTA meeting, the women all shut up and kind of looked at me with bored irritation. I introduced myself, explained that I lived across the field, and asked, do you ladies know those kids? Yeah, one lady responded testily, the only response. Okay, well, I was wondering if you knew who their parents were? The same woman said, yeah, we know, she was just pushing my buttons, but I was trying really hard to curb my temper. Oh, because they've been trespassing in my yard. At this point, the woman got really nasty. So. They're just playing. They're trespassing on my property. And, what's the big deal with that? They're just having fun. Lighten up a little. You know, you're the who who decided to live near a school. At that point, her insta bitch attitude towards my attempt at manners and the assumption that we residents should roll over for them rubbed me just the wrong way. So, I put on my best smile, although, it probably looked a little deranged, and said, well, okay, then. I just wanted to let you know that your kids are playing in poison ivy. You have a good one. It's probably the only mic drop moment of my life, because I turned right around and left. They hastily started calling their kids back, and I watched the kids out of the corner of my eye as I walked away come tromping right through the worst of the poison ivy towards their moms. Anti-Semitic entitled mom says she gets free food, because she says so. Disclaimer, this did not happen to me this happened to a cow or of mine. It'll be telling the story from his point of view, so I'll be using words like I, me, my etc. This did not happen to me it's a Kawaka story background. I work a local sandwich shop that delivers. On our website you can put notes on the ticket like extra onions, deliver to this apartment, etc. Just like special instruction stuff one time, an order came in for 3 turkey sandwiches, 2 bags of chips, 3 root beers and 3 cookies. In the notes, was that a kiddie sub? She wrote on the order for a kid sub, but since it was in the special instructions she was not charged for it, and we did not make it. I took the order to the address, dropped it off, got a tip, and came back to the store just like any other order. When I walked back into the store there was a phone call. It was the lady M, hello yes the kid sub I ordered, wasn't in the bag can you please bring me it? Me, no ma'am I'm sorry, but since the sandwich was in the instructions you were not charged for it. So we did not make it M, but I ordered it, so I should have it. Me, I'm sorry ma'am but that's not how it works. Since you were not charged for the sandwich, we did not get the money required to make it. M, but I ordered it, so I should get it. It was on the ticket, so I should get it. The customer is always right. Fun fact, in the store there is actually a sign that says the customer is sometimes right me, ma'am since you did not pay for the sandwich you didn't get it. That is how it works. M, don't you rob me of my sandwich that I ordered. Since I ordered it, I should get it. That is the law you are robbing me. Me, ma'am no I'm not. You didn't pay for it, so you don't get it. M, listen here you dirty Jew. Stop trying to rob my children of their food. They are starving, and UK asterisk asterisk es keep trying to rob the rest of hard working America of their food. You can kiss your job goodbye. At that point I hung up, told my manager what happened and blocked the woman's phone number, and blacklisted her address. She will no longer be getting delivery from our store. Thanks for reading, M thinks my money is hers. This is a story about my mother and her great manipulative use of memory. I'm also on my phone. 
The cast is very short. M. Me. M. My mother. P. My partner. D. My daughter. Also, I should point out my mother is a covert narcissist, so I can assume a lot of people know how entitled they often are at times. In 2016, my family and I moved to this country, where healthcare is wonderful and social welfare slash benefits for parents are great. Though I was a stay-at-home mother with low efficiency in the native tongue, my partner was working and earning enough money to afford everything for us three people. My daughter's healthcare would be free until she turns 18, so there's nothing to worry about for a long while. Anyway, this is where my M gets worried about us, disclaimer, M has always been money oriented. I grew up being emotionally abused to be a bank for her in old age. I practically owe her everything after she retires, or otherwise I would be an ungrateful brat and karma would eat me up in hell, 2016, M, where do you get your money? Do you have some? M. No, I don't get money, since I cannot work just yet. M. Doesn't P take care of you? What about D? M. They are fine. He works his, but off to take care of us, so there's no worry there. D is taken care of by the government. We get benefits for her. This is where I fucked up. I should not have told her that back then. I did not think a person could be this low, but we will fast forward the story to 2019 where I got the permanent residence permit, a great language skill, and a job, yadai, 2019, m, do you earn enough money now? m, what do you mean? m, I'm going to retire soon, and you never ask me about my money situation, she's always in credit card debts, because of stupid purchases she makes. M, I know how it is for you, and so I don't think it's any idea to ask. M, how do you spend your money? M, I help with the rent, the electricity, the groceries, these essentials, etc. And high tax. Why? M, I thought you were doing fine without having to pay. M, excuse me? I want to contribute after these years. What are you talking about? M, you said P is rich, so he takes care of the three of you. You said D is getting paid by the government. His parents don't need his money either. So when are you going to give me your money? M, so you expect me to live off of him for free, like I did in those times, where I couldn't do a single damn thing. M, I don't see what's the problem. His side of family doesn't need you guys money, like I do here. I'm not begging for money like you always think I do, but you should think of the family too, after that we went on to have a fight. She called me names, saying I was an ungrateful brat, I should have been an orphan, God will condemn me to hell, etc. I told my partner about this, and he was just laughing his butt off. He shook his head and just dismissed it. He couldn't believe it either, nor could his mother. His parents worked their asses off and saved up the retirement plan. Sure, they get benefits, but the money mostly comes from their savings too. My mother would have had the same thing if she wasn't too busy getting herself into debt and pawned off my crap or stealing my college fund from my grandfather to pay the bills. TL, doctor my mother believes I shouldn't contribute to help out my partner this household except giving her all the money that I earn. M attacks me in M fashion. Some backstory, I'm turning 27 on the 15th of October and this happened at my 10th birthday party. It was at a public park and I lived a small town, so we all knew each other. EM equals entitled mommy B equals entitled brat D, dad M equals me, so I was having my birthday party at a park. It was a regular party, cake, and presents thing. So we had started the party, and were stationed at the only picnic table in the park. Me and a few of my friends had been playing on the playground, when my dad called us over. He sat me down, and I started opening stuff. When I was done, he started to cut the cake. M, look Jimmy, not real name, there is some cake for us, they walk over to where we are M, can you give me a piece of cake for Jimmy D, no, it's my son's birthday, and you are not invited M, well, it is a public park, and my son is very hungry Eb, mommy you said I could have cake. 
D. Get away from my son's birthday party now, or I'm calling the police now this was complete bullshit, but that made them walk away. For 10 minutes now at this point we had eaten the cake and were playing on the playground while our parents cleaned everything up. I was on the swings with my other friend out of the four swings at the park. M. Give my child your eat on the swing me. Um. Ma'am there is two other seats. Not meaning to be mean, but sit your child somewhere else. M. How dare you tell me what to do with my child. Now she is screaming and has the attention of my parents and everyone else at the park. I start crying and then the women grabs for me. D. Get away from my son now. M, your shit stain of a son told my son that he couldn't swing on that swing my mom steps up to her, but before she could say anything, the M slapped her across the face. My dad is already on the phone with the police while my aunt held the lady down. Needless to say, we pressed charges and she went to jail for a few months. We never had a public party again. M on not always right not my story, asterisk 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 or on not always right and thought it was worth sharing here. HTTPS slash slash natalwaythright.com slash bad people come in stolen packages slash 169314 slash HTTPS slash slash natalwaythright.com slash bad people come in stolen packages slash 16. 9314 slash, if you would like to comment there, to asterisk, I'm an adult living with my family while attending college. I run a small online business where I often ship and receive small packages containing moderate to high value items. Sometimes I repair antiques, and other times I get good deals on collector's items, and then sell them for a profit, stuff like that. This means that my household often receives and ships a higher than average amount of mail and packages. Due to the economy, our neighbors often come and go quickly. I know none of them as a result. One day, I go pick up my mail from the lockbox at the end of the street and walk home. On my walk, I hear someone shout but keep going, thinking they are talking to their kids or something. It's coming from a house where I have just seen a moving truck, so I know they are new to the area. An hour later, there's a knock at the door. When I open it, it's an older woman in a dirty mumu who hasn't brushed her hair in a week. Asterisk 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 me. Asterisk 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 backslash asterisk s-u-s-p-i-c-i-o-u-s backslash asterisk asterisk can I help you, woman? Asterisk asterisk yes, you can give me my mail. Asterisk asterisk me. Asterisk asterisk I don't have any mail. That isn't for someone from my household, sorry. Have you tried calling the post office? Sometimes if you call them it forces them to look for it. If that doesn't work, then you could call woman. Asterisk 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 backslash asterisk raising her voice I saw you take my packages. Just now. Don't make me involve your parents. Or the police. Asterisk asterisk me. Asterisk 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 backslash asterisk p-i-c-k-i-n-g up the small pile of packages from the table near the door. These. Asterisk. She reaches out to grab them, but I take a step back. Asterisk 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 me. Asterisk asterisk these are all addressed here. To me. Or to other people who live in this house. They are just a similar size to whatever you're expecting. I can't help you. Asterisk. She starts screaming at me, calling me a thief, and threatening to tell my parents as I set my packages back down. She says some other s backslash asterisk backslash asterisk backslash asterisk that I miss because I shut the door in her face. I ignore her as she kicks the door and shrieks like a wounded banshee. After a few minutes, she gives up and storms away. I make sure to tell my family about it and ask them to always take pictures of our mail when they pick it up so we can show it was addressed to us. After a few days, the woman sends me a letter, asterisk woman, asterisk asterisk d little backslash, insulting name, I saw you on backslash, date, taking my mail. I know it was mine. You stole it, and I will be getting in touch with the lawyer, unless you send me $500, and confess to the police what you've done, asterisk, the letter is about 10 pages of word salad, threats of legal action, and accusations. 
I keep the letter aside and do not respond because I know one shouldn't engage with crazy people. I figure she's stressed from moving in and just needs to emotionally level out so her paranoia will go away and we can forget this issue ever happened. The next time I have an incoming shipment and walk it home, the cops come knocking on my door, asterisk offers a hash one, asterisk asterisk we were told that a 15 year old who lives here has been seen picking the mailbox lock and taking packages that aren't this. Did your child suddenly come into any new items, asterisk asterisk me, asterisk asterisk no, officer, there are no children who live here. I'm the youngest, but I'm 23. I picked up the mail a little while ago. Here. If you'd like to give these to the right address, be my guest. I also have the mailbox key right here, which I was planning to return in the morning when I send out going mail, asterisk, I hand him the mail, and after briefly checking through it, he hands it all back to me, because it all is addressed to my household, asterisk 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 me, asterisk asterisk it was that woman at backslash, address where I heard yelling before, wasn't it, offers a hash one, asterisk asterisk I can't confirm or deny, but can you tell me why you'd suspect that, asterisk asterisk me, asterisk asterisk she's convinced that I'm a teenager, that I've been stealing her mail, and sent me this letter threatening me about it. I didn't want to involve the police, since it's not that big a problem. I figure once her package arrives, she'll calm down, anyway, asterisk, the cop reads the first two pages of the letter, then takes pictures of every page, including the pages where she printed her own address with the presumption I would mail her a check, asterisk offers a hash one, asterisk asterisk would you want me to look into arresting her for this? This is, well, wow. I don't think you're safe here, so long as she lives nearby, asterisk asterisk me, asterisk asterisk, only if you can't make it stop tonight. Please tell her to leave me alone, and if she doesn't, then I will want to discuss the issue further. Oh, and in case she tries to argue that previous shipments here were hers, I've saved the boxes of every single package this address has received since the day this issue began. I've also got a list of tracking numbers to prove the dates of arrival, offers a hash one, asterisk asterisk please, do me a favor and type up everything that happened, take some pictures of those boxes, and prepare a list of tracking numbers of yours. Meanwhile, if she bothers you in any way again, here's the case number, please call us, asterisk asterisk me, asterisk asterisk yes, sir. Thank you, asterisk, the officer gives me the card and leaves, and then walks to the address I suspected. He speaks to her for a very long time, and remains parked near my house for about 2 hours. By the time he leaves, it is almost midnight. As soon as his car turns around the far side of the street, and is out of sight, there's a knocking on my door. I don't open it, but up to speak through the closed, locked door, asterisk 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 me, asterisk asterisk didn't, that cop tell you to leave me alone, woman, asterisk 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 backslash asterisk s-h-r-i-e-k-i-n-g backslash asterisk asterisk how dare you lie to the police. You'll be sorry if you don't give me my packages. You ruined my son's birthday. He didn't get his toy. Because you stole it, asterisk asterisk me, asterisk 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 backslash asterisk exasperated backslash asterisk asterisk I don't have your s backslash asterisk backslash asterisk backslash asterisk, you nut job. If the cops get called here, they'll be taking you to jail, so it's better for you to just leave me alone, asterisk, she does leave, but leaves another copy of her manifesto taped to the door. I take a picture of it and write out my statement of what happened, including the list of tracking numbers and pictures of the boxes, before calling the police. A different officer knocks on my door, asterisk 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 me, asterisk asterisk so, I'm sure your colleague Phil Dewan, offers a hash too, asterisk asterisk yes, asterisk asterisk me, asterisk asterisk I assume you saw my front door, offers a hash too, asterisk 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 backslash asterisk chuckles backslash asterisk asterisk yeah. I'll be taking her away on a 51 to 50. 
You'll probably have to deal with her again in two days, but there will be an emergency restraining order in place. If she violates it, that, plus the paperwork we already have, you won't hear from her for at least a year. Asterisk asterisk me. Asterisk asterisk thank you, sir. Here's my paperwork. Asterisk. In the mail, I received an unaddressed, unpostmarked letter. It was another copy of the manifesto. My family called the postmaster general and complained about the mail carrier raiding in harassment and violating postal code about unstamped and unpaid mail delivery. I called the police and explained that it had happened again. This time when they arrested her, she didn't come back. Her family moved out within a couple of months since they couldn't afford the house without her income. I know this because her husband sent her son to try to guilt trip me, which I laughed openly at because screw that entire crazy family. Oh, well. Should have thought of that before harassing your new neighbor. Asterisk again, not my story. Entitled parent upset I will not call while I'm teaching. No. I will not stop teaching to return a call. When she called an hour later the answer is the same. I will not stop class to call her back. Plan time. Okay. Call parent. Parent is upset that I've called, having already addressed her concerns so nothing to yell about. Parent proceeds to tell me I should have told her about power school last year. This is my first year in the building. Parent proceeds to tell me I should teach her son differently, and I try to tell her about the document I have that outlines how he is taught differently. Parent declares me condescending, and, yelling so loud her phone is cutting out, informs me that she's thinking she should call the school board and complain about my attitude. I reply that she has every right to raise concerns she has with teachers. I inform her she has the right to call a team meeting to address deficiencies in her son's plan. She hangs up on me. Emails principal. Calls board office. I get to spend my plan time today litigating my day yesterday.